Okay, welcome back to this continuing journey with this SFM from Dr. Steffler. And I've grabbed the camera because um, I've actually had a little bit of a result. Uh, I'll just show you what happens uh, when I press the L3, we get light. And that would be, you know, nothing really. Except I've got the connections now that are coming out of the signal generator and its output goes into the L3 into the magnets at the side which are now just uh, single lines apparently said Dr. Steffler had got too many too much um, surface contact area so there we are into the magnets through the piece of plastic there and then I've now at the moment I've got the um, the grounding going to the back of the LED and I want to try and get rid of that and the whole idea then can be that it's a lot more like his, uh, his circuit that he's now throwing away and <laughs> he's using a couple of L3s instead but I thought this was well worth looking at so that's where I'm at at the moment and I'm hoping to improve things well hey hey check this out in the last video I showed using a ferrite rod to tune this Oh, kind of badly made L3 really, it's not uh, the same kind of thing exactly as Dr. Stifler normally would use. But it will tune in a similar way because if you look at this LED now, we've got the same connections, we're at 9 megahertz. If I go to put this rod inward, oh look at that. So, oh heck, <laughs> yeah it's doing all the capacitive things with the hand as well, uh, starting to get those kind of effects. In fact I've got less output now as I remove the hand. Uh, so, live experimentation time, there we go, I've moved it in slightly, and there we are with better light output. Now, also bear in mind, this is only um, very, very low output on this, uh, it's about, well I measured it as 1.45 volts and about 7 milliamps, but the thing is it's a square wave, and I realised it's more like about 3 volts then. But, if you consider that the input is going in through a piece of plastic, into a coil, <laughs> even that is, uh, you know, it's worthwhile scratching the head around it, it's, it's very strange effect. So less waffle and more experiments. Well, I'll tell you what is interesting, if I change the tuning anywhere from 9 megahertz, anywhere at all, whoops, if I do this right, off it goes, just a complete blank off, and then you can see the numbers spinning around, Nothing at all happens with any other frequency. Spin it back up again, and it will suddenly pop on at 9 megahertz. There we go, boom. That's weird in itself, that's a bit different. <laughs> this is kind of funny actually, I can't just change the magnets around because I get my hand near to them and the thing. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's doing that whole capacitive coupling kind of thing and me grounding it and um, so I can't actually change, I mean if I change anything on the tuning of the magnets, you know, different places I have to take the hand fully away, try and remember what it was like before ah, yeah, so anyway it's doing all that stuff which, um, what happens there yeah Oh, that completely... Oh, right, okay, so my grounding effect of my body actually switches this thing off. I don't know whether it retune, retune elsewhere, but the fact that it only comes on at 9 megahertz anyway, no other place. I would think not. But the uh, next thing I'm going to try and do is to take this lead off and capacitively couple to the back, um, either with perhaps the aluminium foil or a big heat sink. Okay, and here is the foil. Um, there's a much better distance, as it were, between that and the back of the LED than there was with the big aluminium slab. But um, we've still got, like I say, we've got the L3 there going through the magnets, through the plastic, and the LED is on. And that's the only connection, is that lead there going back to the signal generator. I'm very pleased indeed with that. Okay, thanks for watching.